Hey guys, welcome to Survive Science. My name is Anna. We're going to start today by making our own bioresin. So I thought it would be helpful just in case for those who are really new at science and really new at experimenting, I'm going to show you first how to make your foil tray before we even begin the experiment. So I like to take a piece of foil that's twice the size of how much I want to make my resin. So this piece of foil is roughly two feet. I'm going to start it by folding it in half. So now I have a half piece. It's a little bit of silver shining out, but that's not a problem. So I always like to fold silver side inwards so that all of my products is gonna happen on this matted side. Just because the matted side is gonna be less reactive, less energized, and therefore better for you. So what we're going to do, I'm now going to take every top and now I'm just going to fold it over. And I'm gonna do this for every single side. It doesn't have to be really even, because our goal right now is to make a tray. So fold it over, fold it over. And the reason I double fold is so that even if we have a tear on one layer, it's not gonna get all the way through. So here are my folds. Next, we're actually going to lift them back up, but leave them perpendicular to your surface. So leave them standing up. And then, if you do it in the pattern, a tall side like mine, we can just fold it over twice. And then what we're going to do, since this is already looking like a tray, right? Almost. So we're going to take these corners. We're going to squeeze them together so that they make a little diamond. And we're going to take our diamond and fold it over, like so. So I'm going to show you that on this side now. So we're going to fold our diamond, pull it out like a triangle, take and we're going to fold over. We're going to do the same thing on all sides, and then we are ready to begin our bioresin. If you have a cookie sheet or parchment paper, it'd be a great idea to put it down on your foil. Otherwise, you are more than fine just using your foil, and nothing will happen. I do want to advise, do not use any plastic. Plastic will melt, since we're moving this from relatively low heat to relatively high heat. Awesome. Thanks, and keep watching. Because bioresin is a form of plastic that is both biodegradable and sustainable. I'm using this particularly as a Christmas inspired event to make our own fragrant crystals of resin that you can later burn or even rub on yourself because all of this stuff is totally safe. Let's go ahead and review what we have. So I have eucalyptus oil. I got this for five bucks, the cheapest essential oil you can get for roughly two bucks. I got some room temperature tap water. This is some Heinz distilled vinegar. I got some moisturizing vegetable glycerin. I found this actually in the beauty section of Whole Foods with additional soaps and moisturizers. I actually bought it for five bucks. You can get a bigger container, which is roughly eight fluid ounces for 10. And then I got cornstarch right here in the back. Some helpful tools to have is gonna be the saucepan. You're gonna have your spatula for rubbing everything off. I like using this rubber whisk because it's not gonna scratch my surface, but it's also really easy to mix with a little stickage. We need teaspoons and tablespoons for measuring, and then we need our final um, tray so that this can dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the recipe that you can find on Twitter. So if you ever need help finding it, just refer to soapboxscience.com. Or, hey guys, it's Anna again from Soapbox Science, and we're going to be making our own bioresin, which is super exciting, because bioresin is a form of plastic that is both biodegradable and sustainable. I'm using this particularly as a Christmas-inspired event to make our own fragrant crystals of resin that you can later burn or even rub on yourself, because all of this stuff is totally safe. Let's go ahead and review what we have. All right. Let's begin making our bioresin. So the recipe calls for one tablespoon of cornstarch. This is for a relatively yield, low yielding amount. It's roughly going to give you less than an ounce. Awesome. I got my cornstarch from Whole Foods. This is roughly five bucks. No, this is roughly two bucks. And it gives you a lot. Oh boy, this stuff is super messy. So be careful. All right. We're gonna start with one tablespoon. 
I'm going to do a nice heaping helping tablespoon. I'm going to add it to my saucepan. I'm going to show you my saucepan in just a second before we start our procedure. So, the next thing I'm going to add is one teaspoon of vinegar. So we need to make sure we have our measurements correct. So here's my teaspoon. I'm using Heinz distilled vinegar and I'm doing one teaspoon. You can buy this at any convenience store. You can buy almost all of these ingredients at any convenience store. You shouldn't have any reaction happen, happening in your solution quite yet. We're not there yet. So then the next step is adding one teaspoon of vegetable glycerin. This is the bio part. You can find this at Whole Foods in the beauty section next to the moisturizers. This container only cost me $5. You can buy an eight ounce container for roughly $10. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and pour it straight from the top. You can do a more controlled pour it from the nozzle, but we need one teaspoon. It's kind of runny, almost looking like soap. And just because I added such a heavy amount of cornstarch, I'm even going to add a little more glycerin in here. So glycerin is a hydrocarbon, which is just a chain of carbon and hydrogen. Why is this important? So this acts like a binding agent. So it's used in moisturizers as a thickener. It's also itself kind of has some moisturizing qualities. It's also used as a sugar in oftentimes plants. So I'm all done with my teaspoon. I just put it away in my sink. Then the next step, I have just some tap water. Doesn't matter what kind, should be water. We need four tablespoons. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four. Great. That's all I need. Then, since I said we're going to be specifically making this to be fragrant resin, I'm going to go ahead and use some eucalyptus oil. Eucalyptus essential oil. You can find this almost at any convenience store as well. I got this for five bucks. You can find essential oils as cheap as two dollars. Um, and again, this stuff is really potent. Mm, I'm only going to say two, three drops because that's enough to actually go ahead and flavor my pot. So one, two, three. Awesome. Now, let me go ahead and show you what we're looking at here because this is going to be our solution. All right, we have our bioresin ready to mix. Before I add heat, I'm going to go ahead and stir with my little plastic um, whisk. This plastic whisk is great just because it's not gonna scratch up my pan, and this solution is kind of sticky. So when I'm mixing it, you can kind of tell it's tough to break down. And that's because of the cornstarch reacting with the water. But no worries, if we keep mixing this long enough, it's gonna turn into a nice mass, and that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for that nice, even mass, and then I'm gonna turn it on a very, very low heat because it's gonna thicken up really, really fast. So before I do that, I don't want to be struggling with this cornstarch before I add my heat because when I add my heat, it's going to go really fast. So I want to make sure it's pretty silky smooth beforehand. Okay, cool. So now, I'm going to turn my heat on really low. I really don't want it much more than this. And now we're going to go ahead and mix. So we're looking for this stuff to be nice and solidified. So it almost thickens like jet, like jelly. So if you've ever made gelatin before, this is kind of what we're looking for. And you can already see it's kind of giving me some resistance, which is awesome, because that's what we're looking for. If you added any essential oils to your resin, you're going to start smelling it right about now. It smells great. And you can see these bubbles, also a really good sign. So this is super early in my process. I'm going to make sure that my tinfoil is in an easy location. And now we're going to go back. This part is not super fun to watch, but if you are making your own bio resin at home with me, this will kind of give you a time frame as to whether or not you're on the right track and whether or not your ingredients have come together. If you really want to, you can crank up the heat. I'm not a big fan of cranking up the heat. I would rather have them nice and slow than kind of be sad and sorry when this is all over. And you can see it's kind of starting to break apart from itself. Which is great. It means it's getting more viscous or it's getting thicker. All of this is human safe. All of my ingredients are non-GMO. Um, totally up to you. You can use this for other stuff. Except for fragrance. You can use this in arts and crafts. You can use this as a mold. You can use this for casting as well. You can also do this just to show off to your friends that you made something. But make sure to keep following Colorado Soapbox both on Facebook and Twitter to get more DIY experiments because we're super about getting the community involved in science. My name is Anna once again, and I am social media manager for this as well as a chemist on the side. So all sorts of these reactions is actually what I'm best at. Okay, so this is starting to come together. I still need to keep going because it's not thick. We are looking for something super thick. So this is just the beginning. 
I find actually probably I'm going to crank up the heat just a little. So if this happens just a little quicker. Too hot and it'll start to burn. You don't want this to burn. I because if it burns, you can't use it. Um, so we're looking for a flour consistency if you're a cook. It just takes some time. It smells in my home right now. It smells like eucalyptus and vinegar. My bubbles you start to form, that's a good sign. Really look at those bubbles. Because soon these bubbles are going to turn into cooking items. Now, to practice safe chemistry, some rules I always like to share, but this is kitchen chemistry, so none of this stuff is designed to hurt you. Um, but some rules that I always like to use is make sure you have gloves, make sure you have protective eyewear, make sure your fume hood is on, so if we're ever working with anything volatile like rubbing alcohol, always make sure that your stove fan is on. Um, nothing flammable next to the stove either. Oh, nice, and look at that. We're getting some creaminess in here. And that's really what we want. We see that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. Look at that. It's going super fast now. This is when it's actually starting to bind together and form a little sticky solution. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the heat completely at this point, and I'm going to finish the rest of this off just by mixing it. Oh, yeah, and you should notice that it's a nice cream at this point. I'm going to save as much as possible. So now, I'm going to move on to the next step. So Anna, again, we're going to remove our bioresin. So I'm going to take my spatula, my non-stick spatula, and I'm going to start moving this across my pan so that it's all on one side, and then I'm going to go ahead and spoop on the foil. Nice, we're going to go ahead and Let's remove plastic this time. But no worries, we can use our fingers because none of this stuff is going to hurt us. This stuff might just be a little hot. So now what I'm going to recommend is depending on how big you want your crystals, I'm going to spread it out on my foot. So if you take a look, I kind of have, oh my god. So some spreading tricks. I always have a partner if you're videotaping, but I just like to pat it down with my spatula. So now I have a nice sheet tray of this bioresin. You can go ahead and feel it with your fingers. It's probably going to feel soft. And I'm going to let this cool naturally. If you're in a rush, you can throw it in the fridge. We're going to come back to this in a couple of hours and see what happened.